I have an important announcement to make to the world. The time has come for us to open our eyes and our mind and start acknowledging the changes that are taking place in our world today. What I am sharing will shock you for two reasons. First, mankind never dreamed that a day would come when all the knowledge he requires would be placed in his hands. The second reason is the information I am sharing comes from the master teacher that the world knows as Jesus. And let me assure you that everything that you will see in this video is the absolute truth. And I can provide the evidence to prove it. This is the apocalypse treasure chest. The word apocalypse is another word used to describe the missing book of Revelation in the King James Bible. And the reason why it can be compared to a treasure chest is because the information that is inside has been hidden from us for 2,000 years. And what it contains are the secrets of man, past, and future. Once this chest is open, it will start a new period of knowledge in the history of mankind. I would also like to add that once this chest is open, all the atheists will have all the information they need to prove the existence of the Creator. The agnostics who believe that salvation can only come through knowledge will have the information they need to prove that they were correct. The Christians will have the opportunity to replace their blind belief with a proven truth that comes from Jesus. And the children will have the tools they will need to build a better world. The open chest shows four important warnings. The first is Jesus said that religion have divided my people. We can go to the next warning because we can verify that this is the truth. The second warning, Jesus said, I came to save mankind. This picture of the body of humanity shows that each of us is a cell of the human body. And when the cells are divided, the body is in chaos. When the cells are united, the body becomes a powerful force. The third warning comes from Revelation 5, verse 3 to 5. And here John is saying that he was given the seven seals. However, he couldn't find a human being that could open the seven seals. 
that revelation verifies the importance not only of the chest, but of what is inside. The fact that it is now being opened proves that the master teacher has returned. The final warning comes from Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. And this comes from Paul. And what Paul is saying is, let no man deceive you by any means. The sign of the beginning of the final days is when the identity of evil has been revealed. We now go to the first item in the chest. And on top is a sword. In Revelation chapter 1 and chapter 2, the sword is described as the double-edged sword. The double-edged sword is the weapon that Jesus placed in mankind's hands to defeat and destroy the evil force. Out of his mouth came a double-headed sword. The translation, out of his mouth came the commandment to love one another. The sword explains that Jesus' command is the weapon to defeat evil. And his command was to love one another. The second item in the chest is the book of creation. What this book contains is the detailed information of what took place at the beginning of the creation of the universe and also include the origin of the first two beings that created the human race. The third item, which is the last, is the decoding of the apocalypse. And I will just ref like to refresh your memory that John said, no one could do it except Jesus. We now have two important books that for the first time in human history have completed the story of creation. And the important point is it allows us to prove the truth for ourselves. Now that we have the book of creation in our possession, there are another category of books that we also need to be, need to be eliminated. And that is the scientific books. The scientists have created more confusion by their unproven theories. The details of creation, how our universe got started and how it will end, that information is now in our possession. Stephen Hawking wants big answers to big questions. How can we understand the universe? Is it arbitrary, or is there a grand design? Do we still need a god? 
Stephen Hawking's lifelong quest has been to find the theory of everything, a theory which explains how our cosmos came to be. He's within reach of this holy grail. One final obstacle blocks his way, the problem of gravity. My recent experience of weightlessness demonstrates how well we understand gravity on a human scale. But we must understand gravity as it affects individual particles. At the Big Bang, everything was one. But as the universe cooled, four forces emerged. Electromagnetism and the two nuclear forces, which control atoms and radioactivity, they all seem to be about the same strength. But the fourth force, gravity, refuses to join the club. Professor Lisa Randall of Harvard University is a physicist who, like Hawking, is trying to bring gravity into line with the rest of nature. It turns out that gravity is many, many orders of magnitude weaker than the other forces. And certainly gravity doesn't seem that weak when you're climbing up a mountain. But with an incredibly tiny magnet, I can pick up this paper clip with a tiny magnet. Now, is that amazing? Well, this tiny magnet is competing against the gravitational force of the entire Earth. You heard it for yourself. The paper clip experiment proved that this small magnet was able to pick up this small paper clip without any reaction whatsoever from this gravity force that they have told us exists not only in the earth but also in the entire universe once you read jesus story of how creation began you will have the necessary proof and to know what i know because Gravity does not exist. All the cosmetologists were wrong. And I can give you a quick sample of why, how, and what really exists. According to the scientists, we are being pulled on in our chairs. Fruits or the apple is being pulled on to the earth by gravity when the truth is we are not being pulled on we are being pushed on by the energy pressure in the universe and by the law of activity created by God himself so for the first time we know no gravity And there are many examples in this book that you will find out for yourself. We have been misled by people who are presenting their unproved theory as though it is true. Well, the truth is now here. I am offering a challenge to Stephen Hawkins to Hawkins students and to all the cosmologists on the planet. And I want them to prove that the details of how our creation began is incorrect. Now, at the beginning of this video, I assured you that the information I was sharing was the absolute truth, and it is. 
And I also assured you that I had the evidence to prove that it is the truth. Therefore, let me, let me introduce you to my first piece of evidence. Here is evidence number one, the truth box. The truth box has two compartments. Compartment one, Compartment 2 on the top, which I have always kept sealed until I am ready to reveal what it contains. But basically, what is inside this box and why it is so important is because of what Jesus revealed. And if you do not remember anything in this video, remember this. Jesus said that he came not to prove his greatness, but to prove yours. In addition, he, guide, he is guiding us. And what he is saying is, the truth that we desire lies not outside of us, but rather within us. The proof that I found inside myself I have locked in the truth box and when I'm addressing a group of people I will reveal the secret because it is the key of understanding what lies within you my second evidence is the divine puzzle I got this information, or the idea, actually from Albert Einstein. And this is what Einstein said. He said, the day that a child can understand the story of creation, you will know that that is the truth. Basically, what he was saying, that it's a simple story, but all the pieces has never been put together. Well, I have my puzzle on creation. And what happened that during my 50 years of research, searching for the truth, I realized that what I was dealing with was not a mystery, but rather a puzzle, a divine puzzle. And the Creator, through His prophets, through His messenger Jesus, provide various pieces of the puzzle. The final piece of the puzzle was placed within the treasure chest. And my puzzle is completed. On the top, I have the key pieces to the puzzle. And I would like to give you an idea what those key pieces are. And of course, it's a picture puzzle. On the top, these are my key pieces to the puzzle. In this line, I have the key pieces of what came before the Big Bang. And yes, because I don't think I mentioned it before, Jesus confirmed that the Big Bang did occur. And of course, the problem that the scientists they're having, they do not understand what came before the Big Bang. All these have been given by Jesus, some in the Bible, and the higher knowledge of those pieces came inside the chest. The first picture or the first key piece of the puzzle is that we now have 
the beginning, the story of the beginning of creation and the decoding of the end of the story. The second piece is telling us that God is an energy force. Therefore, two kingdoms exist. Kingdom, the physical kingdom that we exist in, and God's kingdom, which is an energy kingdom. The third piece of the key is what is really the most important piece of this entire puzzle. The spirit. The connection between the creator, our connection with Jesus, and their connection with us is because of the spirit. And what Jesus is now revealing for the very first time is that in each human, a tiny seed of God's spirit was planted within man. And the exciting part of it is the spirit has the capacity to generate divine energy. I didn't say energy, I said divine energy, which is the most powerful force in the entire universe and in God's kingdom. The third key is where Jesus is explaining that the Big Bang did occur. And this is important because it is because of the Big Bang it is during the explosion of the Big Bang that there was a change of state. So, the first two humans, which came from God's kingdom, the, the explosion created a change where energy became matter. And this transformation, uh, we are quite aware of it. Because even with water and ice, which is a solid, then you can get the solid back to liquid and the liquid back to gas. So a transfer, transformation took place after the Big Bang. The second to last piece has to do, again, with the body of humanity. And this is an important piece because we need to understand the reality of creation. One world, one people, one truth. Three simple pieces that we must understand. And we must understand that the body of humanity needs to be united. So with this force, and with this higher knowledge, we can create a better world. And how long it will take for us to create this new world depends on how long it will take you to understand what I have just shared in this video. A very important piece is the last piece. The question is always been asked, where is God's kingdom? Where is heaven? And actually, once you understand what took place during the Big Bang, you will discover that after the explosion, a barrier, an energy barrier, was put in place by God's kingdom to separate physical matter from divine energy. So there is a border around our universe. And to answer the question, where is God's kingdom? Where is heaven? It's really very simple. It is outside the border of our universe. Therefore, God kingdom is this circle. Our universe is within the circle. And a day will come when this small circle 
will disappear and everything in it will become one again. Exciting, interesting, mind-boggling, and it can only be done by one thing, the double-edged sword, love, because love is an energy force. The story started with energy, it has to end with energy. We are energy beings, that's why we need to eat food to get that energy to keep our energy body alive and well. And I wanted to send a message so that they know that the entire story of creation is available and all the potential, the energy, the knowledge that they need to create this new world for their future lies within themselves. And I tried to share all these knowledge in a simple song. I hope you will enjoy. Thank you. This song right here, this song right here, is for all the children of the world. Because if our world is to be changed, it would be done by our children. For only love can change our world. So let us encourage our children to start building a dream for tomorrow. Wherever you may be, it really doesn't matter. All I want to do is to encourage you to take time out for tomorrow. is true surrounds you all you see is the hills of your yesterday dreams not coming true Ooh. so let the children know you can do it tomorrow you can do whatever you want to do tomorrow if they only have a dream you want to be tomorrow you can be anything you want to be you can be anything you want you can be. travel faster than a butterfly higher than the clouds see beyond our world and you can paint all all the beauty you see all the beauty you see
So let this whole world know that peace, love, and happiness is home in our dreams for tomorrow. Tomorrow. So, in closing, in the chest we found the double-headed sword, which is the weapon given by Jesus to defeat the evil forces. For the first time, we have the complete story of creation. In addition, we have the ending story which is the decoding of the book of the apocalypse the same book that John said that only Jesus could decode now know that we have the complete truth I will show you how easy and simple it can be to create a completely different world by simply placing the book of creation in the front of the Christian Bible and placing the decoding of the apocalypse at the end of the Bible we have for the very first time a complete story If we also add the story of creation to the Torah and the apocalypse behind at, or at the end of the Torah, we also have a complete and exact story. By repeating the same procedure with the Quran, we place the book of creation in the front, the apocalypse at the end, and we also have a complete story. Just imagine three different Bibles, but yet one beginning and the same end. Now let's put all these Bibles and these two books together. 